Hello and welcome to the English Martial Arts Podcast Show. And now, the moment you've all been waiting for. It's the English Martial Arts Podcast Show. I love them a lot. There was a time when I used to train every single day without fail. And I did that for years and years and years. Every single day. I never used to miss. Never missed anything. Club training, training on my own, training in seminars, everything. But now I'm quite a bit older and I don't train every day. I put that foundation down a long time ago. Now, I am lucky if I train maybe two, three times a week. Um, I manage to get to the club once a week, and the other training I do on my own. Now, as a teacher, I'm lucky I know what to train in to make me the best I can be at what I want to do. And I take a lot of time with knife work, sax work, stick work, unarmed, grappling, etc. And it really pays off strength-wise and fitness-wise. So, get on to the topic, how much training is enough? Well, it depends really on what you're trying to achieve, because if you're a competitor and you like to enter competitions, you need to train every day, or at least five times a week. Your diet needs to change, um, your exercise routine needs to be specific, and You really, really do need to train every single hour that you can because you need cardiovascular fitness and you need power and you also need a very, very high skill level as well as many other things that comes with being a competitor. Now, if you're only interested in it as a hobby, then once a week's fine. You can get on with the rest of your life and not worry about your training until the day you have to go. And if you don't go, it doesn't matter too much because it's only a hobby, really. Or, if it's like myself, it's a way of life, you train as much as you need to and every other thing you do in your life is lived round your martial art. Everything. So whether it be work, family, everything else works around your training. And there's a fourth category. There is the person who trains in his martial art for self-protection. Now, how much do you need to train for that? Well, at least two or three times a week, and you need to do a little bit of training outside of the gym on your own. Um, You need to concentrate on what's correct for what you're trying to achieve. I mean, if you're training unarmed and weapons, that's ideal, simply because when you're training for self-protection, self-defense, you need to know how to handle weapons. You need to know how they can come at you. So by training with weapons, you realize what can be done with a weapon. And with your unarmed, you need to to be able to strike hard, kick hard. You need to be able to grapple, um, choke, everything, really. And uh, really, you need to be an all-around fighter for any kind of self-defense. I mean, it doesn't matter with competitions because you can specialize. Uh, If people, if you just do longsword competitions, you can just do longsword. But if you're looking at your martial art for um, a different reason, such as self-protection, then you need to have a complete knowledge of what you're doing. You need to find someone with a complete curriculum, not just bits and pieces here and there. They need to have a complete curriculum. So it depends how much you train for what pursuit of the martial arts you do. I mean, some people just come in it for the fitness and the history of it. Some people come in it because they used to LARP and, I don't know, they just want to swing swords around and things like that. Um, Some people were reenactors and they want something that was real for a change. And some people live in very bad areas and they want to know how to protect themselves. And there's many people in HEMA who haven't had the right instruction or have learnt from books. Now, you know, everyone to their own. So they don't feel confident enough in their art to use it for self-protection. But those of us that have been taught it by people and who have been in it for 
such a long time who use their arts in their everyday life and work, then it's a different matter. I mean, those people that are not confident in teaching for martial arts are not really martial artists. They're well, maybe enthusiasts. Maybe, I don't know, they're LARPers, really, with real swords. And you need to find someone who actually teaches it for real, has a complete curriculum, and knows what to do to teach you how to do it for real. So if that's your intention, a bright amount of training time really is two to three times a week, intensive, and training at home as well. And also, you should tra- spend a certain amount of time hardening and conditioning your whole body. I mean, the main parts that really condition are your hands, your fists, the back of your hand, the edge of your hand, your elbows, your knees, your shins, your insteps. You know, all the things you're going to use, elbows, all the things you're going to use to be hitting another human being. And also with your weapon skills, train mainly with knives, sticks, you know, the short kind of weapon that you can conceal or that you can pick up that you'll find. I mean, you won't be able to find a long sword, but you could easily find um, maybe a stick that's the same length, but maybe not. But if you're just walking down the street and people come at you, you've got to really know what to do. So the amount of time training the body, I've already said, but you've got to spend an even larger amount of time training the mind. The mind is the most essential tool in any kind of combat. There's no reason to neglect it at all. You've got to develop what's called an on and off switch, simply because if it happens all of a sudden, you've got to be able to switch on and deal with it. Even if you get, even if you lose, it doesn't matter as long as you're alive and well. You know, you may have a broken nose, or you know, so your teeth are broken, or someone's cut you with a bottle or so. But you're alive, you survive, which means your martial arts worked. Unless you've just curled up into a ball and hid in a corner, and they just prodded you with a ball or something, you know. But you know, that's why training the mind is so essential. The martial mind is the most important thing in any martial art. Not the techniques, not the books that you learn from, nothing except for the martial mind. It's the only thing that will keep you alive or winning. Now, in most martial arts, you find a mixture of everything, every kind of person, black, white, Chinese, um, I don't know, upper class, middle class, lower class, weapons fans, unarmed fans, everything. Ex-army, bouncers, you know, the lot. You, you find everything. But in HEMA, you f- tend to find that there is a real class divide. I mean, you've got the middle and um, upper middle class who help run most of it, and then you've got the rest of us. You know, we're not. We're like working class people, and we have a working class attitude towards our martial arts, which means we always want it to work. And it's not just a theoretical, historical pursuit for us. No, it works, we use it, and that's how it works for us. Whereas the other side, the SJW mob, um, all they're they're more interested in is the politics. And they love to argue on Facebook, and they love to argue SJW snowflake politics. You know, they're so, so accepting, well, they're not. And they're such a bunch of idiots. So if ever you're looking out for a club, for HEMA, find someone who leaves politics at the door. Don't listen to these idiots who say politics was always part of it. No, it wasn't. Right? They're just idiots. But leave their politics at the door. You go in, you train, you get on with everyone. And on the way out, if you're still a prick, you can pick your politics up on the way out. So. Training time is very essential, but it's got to be quality training time. Every minute of your time training has got to be uh, pursued and done properly. Forget teachers who break off halfway for a technique and go and look at their computer or get in the bath or something like that, making pricks, all right? Just make sure that your teacher is there and teaching you. If they start to talk politics, 
move, uh, run away, right? Because they're trying to brainwash you. Don't allow them to do it. Just get on with your training for your own reasons. Now, remember, there are some good people in HEMA. And because they're good, honest, down to earth people, they've been slandered by the SJW mob. Take no notice of them. Now, as for your training, it's really, really worth corresponding with your teacher outside of training time. Because if they're any kind of a decent person, that's what they'll do. I do all the time. Why won't I? I mean, people pay me to teach them. So why wouldn't I be available to them to help carry that teaching on? Now, I'm really, really lucky because I'm quite anonymous. Not a lot of people know about me. But the ones that do know the kind of teaching I do. That's why they come back over and over again. And that's why I get students from other teachers. They just leave wholesale and come to me because I teach the martial art as it was meant to be taught as a fighting art. And obviously they don't like it, but tough, isn't it? You know, they're like babies. They throw their toys out of pram. But, you know, let's get on with your training. Keep going. Push yourself until you're in pain. Keep going, keep going, keep going. And just train, 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 and get the best you can be. Always, always train for yourself. No one else, okay? Yourself. Don't try and impress people. Try and impress yourself. Don't train so that you think people look at you and think, oh, look, I'm good. Train so that you, you think, I'm good. You know, just keep it to yourself. Be selfish in your training because it's you. Remember, martial arts is an individual pursuit. It's not a team sport. Okay, it's for you only because when it, it does hit the fan, you're only going to have yourself to rely on. So make sure you train for you. Okay. Thank you very much for listening to the English Martial Arts Podcast Show, and hopefully you'll tune in next time. Listen to us, because we listen to you. 